Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So another day that we gather here for um, the day of um, the third eye, the emotional week of Taurus. And because today is painting, um and all the colors so i came with all the colors from the dna let's begin as i was saying yesterday the idea of talking about arts this week is because we have been building the house which is our home with the fire inside and this home this fire is related with our soul so our soul is the inner fire that activates the potential that we have within in order to manifest it in the outside. And Taurus is the energy that manifests. Talking about the soul of Taurus, it is related to the arts, to the manifestation of the inside, the inner world. This is why the proposal for this week is to uh, work in the understanding of the main arts, in the main inspirations of the muses so we can understand uh, how they how they work in ourselves how they appear in the world and uh, what importance they have in our inner world in our inside so we can we can understand what they mean for us so and here before we start with all this week of the arts i would like to say to you that don't think or don't say i don't know to do that and in the other hand don't say i already know how to do this how to do this and i i'm really good at it why not to say either of those because the people that say i don't know how to do this is not that you don't know how to do this is because you think that you need a technique or to know in order to manifest something. And basically, it's not like that. Basically, in order to manifest art, you just have to feel it. You just have to express what you have within. It's not about technique. It's not about being a great artist to do art. What you just have to do is to express and to play with it, to be original with it. Arts is not about technique. Techniques are thousands of them. And every artist follows different techniques. So it's not about that. It's about what you want to express. Hmm? So that's the main thing that, that we have to, um, to understand in order to make art. And in the other hand, those who know how to do art and have the technique have to be always open to um, um, have, have to be always open to know that there is much things and many things more to understand, to learn from what we do. It's not only about the technique, it's also about what we have to understand from what we do, the transcendental idea of what this art means and not only to do it properly. Hmm? So why I say this about uh, not thinking about the technique exactly when we are talking about art, because technique comes from the Greek techne, that means beauty, hmm? means to have a shape or something that is perfect okay it's is that is something that that is beautiful in some in somehow so technique was used in order to have a structure in what you kind of are um uh, are painting or doing but the technique starts to be a, a way in which you design the things or the beauty of what you are doing but actually, what I am trying to say here is that in order to take a technique and, a, and to practice a technique and to 
and to have a technique for yourself, you have to discover your own technique, which is to discover your own beauty. Which means that for some people, the technique is, or, or the beauty and the technique are to paint a very hyper-realistic side scene, for example. And for some others, this would be, I don't know, cubism or, or just whatever, lines or whatever. So what we have to do sometimes is to think that maybe it's not a beautiful side scene that, that brings the soul from outside, outside. maybe is also sadness, is also uh, chaos. And we have to discover first our own technique before we can understand others' techniques and to improve in those other techniques. So, for example, when we when we want to improve ourselves with another with others' techniques, like to learn how to do it in different ways, this means that we have to position ourselves in the body, in the motion of someone else, or in or of something else. Which means that we have to be in that same connection or that same level in order to have that connection with the art. So this means that what we have to do first is to express what we have within, express the art that we have inside, and then after that, we can start to manage other kinds of technique by improving ourselves and learning from the emotions of others. Mm -hmm. So of course that, that there are people that were born with the, um, with the gift of doing something. Um, some people that have to practice the whole life in order to do something. But to be born with the gift, it doesn't make you better. To be born with the gift, it means that you have practiced this in other lives or that you inherit it from your uh, family tree in your DNA. You have the, the, the skills to do that. But it doesn't make you better. What really, um, uh, uh, sometimes some people that takes a long time um, uh, to practice and years to practice this, uh, they can become better than the ones that have the gift, okay? But it's all about practicing and to allow yourself to express the will of what you have inside. A lot of people paint but some people are painters. And there are many painters, but just a few are artists. And what I mean with this, that we can paint, we can do things, of course, and also we can have really good techniques that makes us painters, so good painters, but within the painters, there are just a few that are artists, that are the ones that you can see them in every thing that they do, that you just have to take a look at it to understand who they are. Like, for example, Dali. When you see a, um, a frame made by Dali, you don't need to see that there is Dali sign there. You kind of say, see it and then say, oh, that's Dali. Why? Because the artist is painting the soul, the soul of itself. It's not painting for others. It's not painting for it to be beauty. It's not painting for anyone else. It's painting, painting for itself. So you can see the artist in the painting. You can identify them just by looking at anything. And that's because the soul was imprinted in that. Okay? This is important to get, to understand, in order for us to see 
that the only way in which you can become an artist is by connecting with yourself, by being yourself and saying, I am, when you go within with the power of your soul. Hmm? Of course, that we are mammals, so we need to imitate the techniques of others in order to improve, to move around in the environment. But we have to use that environment and those tools as something that helps us to find our originality. Hmm? So we can say that nobody is bad at anything. We are basically mammals looking for our originality. So um, once said this, let's talk about painting. Painting is basically the art that is born from light, from the interpretation of light, which is that we receive the light towards our eyes. We perceive it um, in, in our brain. So we interpret the light that comes from the outside to inside to understand our inner world and to understand the world. So we have two ways in which we will express this light. One, receiving it from the outside to understand the environment. And the other one would, will be to express the inner light that we have towards the outside, which is to manifest that light to the world. So we receive from the outside to mold the inside. And then through painting, we take the colors from the inside and we project it into the outside. So painting is the way in which we can send data of information, information in shape of data of codes to the world. So now uh, by our eyes. So now let's try to understand why is that. So in order to understand this, we have to, to about the information, we have to, um, to remember something that we have spoken about last year, I guess, related to the wavelength of light. So first of all, we have, I guess that we have mainly three ways of receiving light and to perceive light. Uh, the first one is the one that, that is created in the, um, in the chemical reactions of the suns and the stars, like the sun for us. The other one would be the um, bioluminescence, which is created by some some animals and some insects hmm, in nature. And the other one is the electricity, which is created by, as you see, the lightnings or the currents of electricity that we do for our buildings and so on. And of course, I forgot the fire, of course, <laughs> that, that creates light through the chemical reaction of the of burning carbon. So let's take any source of light. Hmm? See? Remember this, that we have a source of light and this light moves through the space in a wave. Hmm? We have a wave here. And during these waves, there are particles that move that we call photons. The photons are, photons basically means light in Greek, photon. Hmm? So those are the particles that move through this. Remember that all this is called vibration. And remember this, that the waves has up, down, up, down, up, down. So the, the periods that it takes to go from one side to another is what we call frequency. Frequency is how frequent they repeat, okay, how frequent they repeat. That's the difference between vibration and frequency. Okay. 
So this wavelength, we will divide it into nanometers. So now imagine this, that here we have one, two, and three that are frequent. So we have frequency three. Here we have one, two, three, four. So we have frequency four. Here changes and start to have frequency five, for example. So this is just as an example, because what really is happening that is that the frequency tells that you have an amount of time in between one and another. So we, what we have to say here is that we would say the, the, the opposite. So imagine this now to see it better, that <clears throat> from one aspect of the wave to the other, we, for example, have to count until five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that repeats one again, once and again. So it's the frequency is five. And now here we have less. So we can go through the wave and we will see that we have here four, here three. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it repeats. So it's a frequency. Hmm? Frequency because it repeats itself all the time. Now, each one of these five is a nanometer. So imagine that this is the wave length, length of the wave. Hmm? So the, in the wavelength, I have here five nanometers. Here we have four nanometers. Here we have three nanometers in each one of the frequencies. So now if we see this wavelength, we have here one, two, three, four. But here we start to repeat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we have more. So what this means that low th this is low frequency and this is high frequency. What represents that low frequency is that you have lower amount of repetitions and higher frequency is that you have a lot of repetitions, many of them. So I'm explaining this because we in the spirituality and the world of the consciousness, we used to say you had a you have a high vibration or you vibrate so low and I resound on this 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 frequency we need to to have a leap of frequency and sometimes we have no idea what it means. <laughs> okay so it's it's important to understand this difference so you can get it. So a person that vibrates low is a person that lives really slow that you can kind of predict what is going to happen next because it's really slow and predictable. Hmm? So good to know that low vibration is not bad. Low vibration is just that is predictable. Like for example, a tortoise. A tortoise is a very slow animal. So it's predictable, it's really slow. It has to sleep five months or six. So it's not bad a tortoise, it's a good being, okay? So, so it's like having lower rhythm, okay? And for example, in the other hand, we have a hummingbird, which is, a very fast process. Hmm? When we create this idea that vibrating low is wrong, it happens when our environment is changing, where the things are changing in my life, and I am not changing. I am doing exactly the same. So it creates an opposition between the two energies from the outside and inside that creates a conflict that brings me into disease because 
or or bad uh, emotions or being sad or whatever because my vibration is still low and my environment is vibrating high okay that's the conflict that we can have that's why we believe that vibrating low is a bad thing but it's not okay so in the same way as we live our ups and downs the photon particles they also live their ups and downs so these particles that are living exactly the same as we live in different ups and downs are all the waves of frequency from the light which is white so when they reach our eyes and they reflect in our eyes the wavelength starts to be perceived by the brain in the different nanometers the different frequencies as it arrives towards to us and that interpretation of the wavelength is the one that gives us the idea of colors so this means that the colors are not outside are inside are within the colors are basically the interpretation of our brain of these waves that are hitting the matter so the colors are from are interpreted inside so now the question would be why do we see all of us this like blue because this is not really blue it means that the chemical the components that we have here inside that we can see the blue um, the components that are there the pigments that it has has a shape a structure in the physical in the physical structure that reflect the light the re reflect the light in different wavelengths so for example the structure can be this like this 90 degrees of structure or this or this or this so the light will heat the structure in different ways so when it when it comes back to us by this reflection we will see different the different colors that's why we see all the same color so for example the people that is daltonic that can see all the colors is basically because the eyes the eyes cannot see the whole spectrum of light the spectrum of light is smaller so imagine that the these people can see only this but they cannot see this one they cannot perceive this wavelength because their their, their eyes are not um uh has a problem that are not 100 percent open to receive the waves wavelengths mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. so that's why they confuse colors or because they only see a few colors here with colors happens exactly the same each color will be like kind of a, a, a word a package of information inside this language of colors so when you mix those colors and create new ones it's like if you are creating words and stories and poetry and so on so a lot of information just by mixing colors so when we receive the colors from the outside we are receiving data from the light straight from the universe so for example you have heard for sure the information of the white ray the blue the green the yellow ray the pink ray the masters that represent those rays are colors so um for example the colors are giving us in our subconscious and unconscious the the colors gives us information all the time that we are not aware of like for example all these colors that we relate with emotions because those colors were present in situations or um situations or traumas that we have lived for example the blue the color blue for some people can represent calm the skies 
opening, but for other people it can represent fear and cold. So it depends on how you perceived that color in the situations that you perceived. So we relate colors with emotions. We relate colors with situations that we live, with data. So for example, we can relate the color red with intensity and, and things that are bad. Like when someone corrects us and they correct the things with, with, a, with a red X or cross, um, or we see the lights uh, in, the, in the streets, um, when we see the devil painted in red, when we see the lava of the volcanoes, we relate the hell with the red. So we culturally has been designed also into understand the red as something that maybe can be bad. This depends on the culture and depends on what the person has lived. It's not general, okay? So basically the colors has the data, the information of what uh, emotions represents for us and how we relate with the world. So we can understand now that we are constantly receiving data in the outside. We are all the time receiving information. So eventually, in human history, after we receive all this data from the outside, we discover that we have things within to share to the world too. And we take those emotions and grab these colors from the outside that we relate with those emotions and start to express it in the outside to tell what happens within. And that's painting. So in history, what people used to do before using the colors, they used to carve the rocks and let some marks in the, in the rock. Marking rock, uh, rocks and making some markings in the rock. In European languages, you may say peik, which in Latin is picto. Picto is to carve rocks. But eventually they started to put some, some things, some, some colors from the environment that they created to um, to difference the, the the carvings that they did, and that's what we call pigmentum. Pigmentum is the things that you put on the carvings, and from pigmentum we have painting. So what is to paint? Is to leave a mark into the outside to tell what is within into the outside to give to leave it carved in the world give leave mark in the world and remember this here is the light that we receive as a wavelength into our brains through our eyes so remember that the sun the light from the outside arrives to our eyes also strata. But we are also light. We are made with photons and electrons. We have our own light within that we call the soul. So we can also from within take that wavelength outside and express through the colors the soul that we have within. So basically all history of art is basically humans interpreting the light that comes from outside and designing it from the light that is within. My advice regarding this, this topic is for you to show your own lights, your inner lights into the outside to express them. It doesn't matter if it's just some marks or or whatever models of uh, of um, of colors, but just allow yourself to express the colors from within the emotions of, uh, from your soul. Hmm? Let's go to the information for today. 
remember that also uh, in the post today in the blog i um, i wrote about the meaning of the colors and how they appear and and also the history of arts so you can have an idea of it the vibration for today is ra the statement for today is i am guardian of consciousness the code for today is fungi closer to animals than to plants the kingdom of fungi extends to diverse environments and ecosystems being the smallest one and fundamental unicellular for food like yeast and other parasitic ones that feed from waste of dietary character poisonous involved in this composition parasitaire hallucinogenic this kingdom of creatures covered with kitten that share with our arthropods has the fundamental function of decomposing organic matter and turning it into manure sit comfortable close your eyes and concentrate in your breathings Take a deep breath and become aware of the space that surrounds you, the body that inhabits, and your own breathings. I start to use my own imagination to, to make all the objects around me disappear. One by one, I start to perceive how they vanish. All of them, I become aware of each one, every furniture, every tool until the walls starts to disappear the roof and the floor vanish and there's nothing else but void and just myself in the center of it And in that void, I take all my attention into only one spot. Putting all my focus into that dot. Watch with all the intention this thought until I can perceive how it starts to be ignited into a spark that expands in many others, creating fire 
that grows until a bright expanding light and I start to feel its heat in my skin. And I recognize that this fire is the fire of my soul, the core that I can use to create my home, the home of my soul, the home of my dreams. I take my hands to the fire and very smooth and slowly, I start to design my home around me from this light, from this fire. Slowly stretching the body with soft movements as if you are dancing. Start to design from the fire the walls of this house, the floor, the roof, the garden, every room. and all the furniture. I start to recognize that this house is myself, my soul. Every room is a chakra, an organ. The walls, my skin, in the basements, my bones. And I take this fire and from its light, I start to paint the house with colors. I start to put all colors in every room, painting memories in the walls, emotions, recognizing which, spell, which places in this house are much more colorful and which ones are lower and darker. I use my hands to paint with this fire all this house with all these colors. I become aware that these colors are my own emotions and feelings. They are the soul manifested 
the conscience of the soul. And I look at myself as the guardian of this consciousness, of this home. the guardian of conscience. I am the guardian of conscience. I am guardian of conscience. I have this conscience in me. I have, I have, I have. Taking all these colors from the fire to the heart, take a deep breath and slowly each one at its own time, come back here and now. And those who are following the task for this month, take all this energy Put it into the water and pour it in the seeds and plants that we have sowed. Thank you everybody. Thank you everybody for being here another day. And as always, See you tomorrow at the same time.